Let's look at five different ways to filter a Power Apps gallery. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a real simple filter, and then we're just going to add on, add on, add on, add on, and make it more complex and robust so you can kind of see some of the different techniques. You know, make sure that you're doing best. If that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so to get us started, I kind of made the app look pretty. I had a picture of Buddy, of course. Uh, I went over here and just added a simple SharePoint data source. This doesn't have anything to do with SharePoint, but I needed a data source to filter, so that's what we got there. And so then we've got just the different controls ready to go. And so we have a gallery, right? That's probably the most common thing that you're going to filter, though sometimes you're filtering collections or dropdowns or other things. All of this would apply there as well. And so the first one we want to do here is just the super simple filter employees, where a column name, so like department, equals, and then we can just do some text like executive. And then boom, we've just got the four people that are executives, right? Very simple filter. Now, most commonly with a filter like this, you probably want to do some type of dropdown. So I have a dropdown over here. And so in my dropdown, I want to have the different um, departments. So there's different ways I could do it. I could make a single column table. So I could just do something like this and be like executive and then IT and then accounting. Like so. All right. So that is a little shortcut that makes a single column table that just has a value executive IT and accounting. So if we did that, we could go over here and just change this to filter department equals. And then we'd replace the executive with the name of the dropdown, which is dropdown one dot selected, not selected text, never selected text, selected dot value. And so then that pulls in that. And if we change it to IT, we get a different set of people, as you can imagine. So one of the things that's important to remember about filter is that all that matters is that whatever is after the second comma here is true. It doesn't matter whether it's something like that. We could just have it, you know, we could just type the word true and then we we'll just return all the records. We could do filter two plus two equals four. And then that would be true, which would do all the records. So, you know, whatever you put here just needs to be true. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you go, as you're playing the matching game. Secondly, always remember that you are matching. You want to have the column on the left, right? So this should be the column from your data source, in this case, employees and then the value you're trying to connect it to on the right. If you kind of remember some of those simple rules, a lot of the complexity of filtering goes out the window because you, you often just overthink things. Now, speaking of overthinking things, so our second thing we want to do is now, instead of just filtering that, what if I still want the ability to see all the records? Like if we hit this dropdown, we can only choose one of these three. Also with this dropdown, we hard coded the values. So let's change that. And so another way we could have got those values would have been to use the distinct function. We could have said distinct employees, comma department. And then now we have got um, in this drop down here, all the distinct values. Now remember that uh, distinct is not delegable. So if my data source was larger than the delegation li uh, limit, then it would have only got back the distinct values from the first chunk in that. In this case, my data set's pretty small, so it doesn't matter. Um, if you're not familiar with delegation, go watch that video. It is irresponsible to build a power app if you don't know about delegation, but I'm going to assume you are. But now that we've done this, right, everything will still just work the way that it did before because this distinct is creating a single column table with a column name of value, but it just has all of those in there. The reason I wanted you to do that is because now I want a way to do all. And so if you look at the dropdown, right, obviously there's not an all in the dropdown because there's not a department called all. So what we want to do is we want to add to this table on the fly. So there's a little bonus tip here, but there is a function called table. And then you can take table. I'm going to say, hey, take that table and then merge it with this other table that we're going to create where it's going to have value all. Oh, close our curlies like that and like that. And so now if we were to look at this dropdown, there is another one down here at the bottom called all. And if you're thinking, well, Shane, shouldn't that be in the front? I'm now thinking that. So we'll just say control X. We'll put that on the front side here, put a comma in there and then get rid of our extra comma here. So that's going to merge those two tables. And so now in our dropdown, it starts with all and has all the pieces. But notice when all is selected, there's nothing in our dropdown. So now our second filter tip is that we can do ors. So we can say filter department equals drop down selected value or always capital O. We'll say drop down one selected dot value equals all. So in this case, right, department equals drop down selected value, that's false. 
or drop down selected value, that is all, right, it's true, it's going to be true for every record. So then they all match, and that's why we see all the records all of a sudden. So this is important to understand. When you have an or statement, you can put, if either side of the or is true, then the record the match will be true, and then it will come through. So that's really, really important to understand. Or means one, either left or the right side, either side is true, not both, just one. I mean, both could be true, that'd be fine also, but at least one of them is true, how about that? Okay, but now that's why all works, but if we change it from all back to executive, we see the four, back to IT, we see a bunch, and if we go back to all, we see everyone again, okay? So you can do ors. Now, you can also, though, change that or to be an and. So for example, what if we only want to see the records where the department equals drop down selected value and the last name equals young, all right? So we could go back up here, we'll get rid of this whole or statement, and we would say and last name equals young. And so then now when we do all, it doesn't work at all, so we gotta fix that later. But if we change this to executive, we should just see Nicola and I because we're the only two executives with the last name of Young, right? If we change this to IT, right, we see Buddy and Chewy because they're the two executives with um, Young as last name, and there's no other Youngs in the list, so all the other ones would just keep coming back blank, okay? So when you wanna do multiple criteria to make sure they're both true, then you use AND with a capital A. All right, so department equals that and last name. Only when both of those true do you get a match. So that's why we're only seeing the people that we see. Now, what if we want to take the extra step? and like, all right, but I need all to still work, right? I want the ability to, see, if they choose all departments, but see the last name of Young. So then what we would need to do there is department equals drop down selected value. So we know that we said or drop down selected value equals all. Now, if you do this, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, why do I see all this? And so that's because now we've written this. Yes, we have all these pieces here, but it's not written correctly. So remember in math class, we learned about parentheses and orders of operations. So we want that same type of thing here. So we're going to put parentheses around this piece. So that says, hey, only right department equals uh, selected value, so executive or selected all. So if one of these two is true, this returns true, right? The parentheses returns true. And last name equals young, that returns true. So that is how that would work. But so now if we switch this to all, we should see everyone with the all last name. Looks like I made a bunch of fake buddies and chewies somewhere along the way. Oh well, what do you do? But so now, right, because this would still be true, but this would return all the records. And, or this would be true for every record, and then last name equals young is only true for these handful of people that have a last name of young. So you can use parentheses. So you can use ands, you can use ors, you can do parentheses, and that's a fairly simple parentheses example, kind of want to overwhelm you, but I've had like nested parentheses inside of parentheses. Like, I mean, you can get as crazy as your mind can handle the logic around that. So, you know, have fun uh, writing really complex queries there. No problem, Power Apps will support them. Speaking of fun, if you're learning lots here, remember I've got all types of training options over at training.powerapps911.com. On-demand classes, live classes, hang out with me, even a six month long university program. So go check those out if you wanna learn more about Power Apps. So next up, what if we wanted to filter based on a range, right? So whether it's a number or a date, we can do that as well. So let's just uh, take all this out real quick, Control X. And so, for example, we have a column called hourly wage, and we can say hourly wage greater than 50. And so then this would return all the employees whose hourly wage is greater than 50. And if we just jump in here to my gallery real quick and click on this and change this to hourly wage so we can see it, you would see that hopefully, if I got it right, right, everyone, so 175, 1,000, and 99 are all greater than 50. So we can do that. You could also do greater than or equals. So we throw an equal sign there. That doesn't really change what's happening there, but that works as well. You can also though, now that you understand ranges and you understand your ands and ors, so you could say hourly wage greater than 50 and hourly wage less than 100. 
And so then now you just get Jennifer and Sarah because Chewy and Allison both make more than $100 an hour. But so that's getting you the people that fall within those ranges. So that's important to understand, right? You can do ranges and you just need to combine them. And you could also, you know, if you want to take this a step further, you know, we talked about before, right? Combining. So we could combine this. It doesn't have to just be that. It could be hourly wage greater than 50 and less than a 1,000 and last name equals Ritter. And so then now we would just get Sarah's record back because Sarah's the only one that fits all of those criteria. So don't always, don't think you have to like just work on one column, right? We can work on multiple columns, no problem. Uh, but there you go, so you can do ranges. You could also, here, let's get rid of the Ritter. Remember these, I keep using hard-coded, these could be these text inputs down here, right? So we got text input two and three, so let's hit play. Let's go down here and just set this to be um, 10 and 50. Okay, so now we've entered the data. If we look, so that's text input two and that's three. What I'd probably do is rename this to input min and then rename this one to input max. But then now we can go up here and be like, all right, so hourly wage greater than input min dot text and hourly wage greater than or less than input max dot text. Now, when we do this, we get an error. If you hover, it's going to be like, hey, I don't know what you mean, right? Because even though I typed in numbers down here, those are still text inputs. So if I want to be treated as numbers, I need to wrap those in the value function. That will turn the text 10 into the number 10. And then if we wrap this one in the value function, that will turn the text 50 into the number 50. And so then now you can see, right, we've got people that fall in that range of 10 to 50. So you have the ability to do text inputs with these as well. No problem. All right, last but not least, let's look at one that a lot of people don't use, and that is called starts with. So let's pull this out of here. I have to delete all this. And so we're going to say starts with, and then what text, so the column that you want to check. So in this case, we're going to just say first name right there. And then we're going to check for SH. And if we do that, we should see just me, right? If we take off the H, just S, we should see me, Sarah, and Steven. So starts with gives you the ability to, like people want to call it search, right? But it's not full text search. It's not searching the middle of people's names, right? We have lots of people with S in the middle of their name, but it's searching the starts with, right? There's a starts with and there's an ends with as well. But you can use those to filter your data. And so if you're comfortable with that, then you could go down here and be like, well, what if I took this text input one and I said first name and then starts with text input one dot text. So right now we see everyone, but if we hit play and we start to type in S, right, we're back to the S's. SH, we're there. If we get rid of the S, we're like that. If we get rid of that, we've got that. J's, right, JE's. So starts with is another way to filter when you want to create a no, don't call it search, right? Because search implies full text searching and there is a search function, but it's not delegable with different data sources, right? We're not gonna talk about search today. But if you're filtering and you're starting with or ends with, then you can use um, that type of familiarity or capability, oh, easy for me to say, and then, you know, go ahead and make a little bit more of a dynamic experience here. And then of course you can combine your starts with with some type of, you know, uh, department filtering, right? So it starts with that and it starts with first name and department equals that. And then if we were to hit play and then if we get rid of this and then we change this back to executive, there's all of them. And then if we start to type in S, we just get me and Sarah and then SH, we get me. And then of course, if you're like, well, Shane, all doesn't work anymore. It doesn't, right? So then you would go here, you'd put parentheses around this thing and you'd put your all in there. And then if you wanted to combine that with your min and max range, right? Like, let's just write a big crazy one here real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to break each one up into a different line, right? So it starts with that and. And so then there's a department. Okay, right? We're just taking what you just had and just kind of making it uh, easier to read. All right, so we know that on this line, we wanted to do the whole uh, department thing. So let's do that again. All right, so that would make it work for first name starts with the text put input in either all departments or the selected department. And then we would just go here, we'd say and again. And then now we want to do the wage. So we'll do 
And now we've got our inputs for that. And so let's test it out, right? So if we go back up here, if we, right? So SH executive 1050, that all looks right. If we change this to all, nope, that didn't work. So let's go look and see what I did wrong. So drop down department equals that or that. So that looks right. That looks right. Oh, it's not department equals all, Shane. It's drop down one dot selected dot value. See, even I make mistakes. It's okay, right? There's the right formula. So now let's try it again. So we see all of them. We'll get rid of the S. We should see Steven. And we don't see Sarah, right? Because Sarah makes way too much money. So let's make this to a thousand. Now we see Sarah. If we change this back to executives, we just see Shane and Sarah. I feel pretty good this works. If we get rid of this, we should see all the executives because they all fall in the range. And then if we change this back down to 50 again, we'll get rid of Sarah. Oh, not 150, 50. There you go. Oh, and Jennifer, because Jennifer makes more than 50. And of course, S again, right? Anytime you build these type of things, you want to test all the different iterations. But I feel pretty good that that is the right answer. So questions, comments, leave them below. Hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this helps you with nesting filters, complex filters, and just a little bit of fun with that. If I can do anything to help you, feel free to reach out over at powerapps91.com. We have consulting, mentoring, training. Uh, we're doing the whole AI, you know, co-pilot studio type of world as well. So if we can do anything to help, let us know. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.